Hi and welcome to the Cult TV Sofa. This is a reaction video for the 22nd episode of Season 2, the last episode of Babylon 5, called The Fall of Night. You can now see the full reaction for this YouTube video on my Patreon channel, along with lots of other goodies. Links in the description below. Last time we saw the Vorlon send a delightful chap to Babylon 5 to test if Delenn was the right person at the right place at the right time for the upcoming war. Shakar was organising a resistance to the Centauri occupation by ordering guns and other weapons, but his people wanted him to prove himself as a leader by getting a message from one of their families on the Narnholm world. The Vorlon's friend kept questioning Delenn and torturing her when she got the answer wrong. Shakar asked Sheridan for help getting the message from Narn homeworld. Seeing the importance of this task, John used the rangers to smuggle it out and prove that Shakar was the right person to lead his remaining free people. After hearing how bad Delenn was being treated, John rushed to assist her but as he was also part of the test, he was placed in the same situation as her. When they both tried to sacrifice themselves for the other, and they showed they would die with no one else knowing what they had done or why, they proved themselves worthy of their roles, and the Inquisitor let them go. After doing a little digging on him, as the Inquisitor was leaving, John got him to reveal that he was Jack the Ripper, from London in the 1800s as you do. Oh, and Via and Shakar had a lovely catch-up chat about the war. So let's see what happens in this episode. I'm going to put any relevant trivia that I find over here, and at the end of the reaction I'll be discussing what happened and my thoughts about it. And I'm going to start it in 3, 2, 1. I haven't seen him for a while. Firing. Training fight. Are you okay? I started to black out for a second, but it passed. Started to black out? Why would they black out? There's no G force. The that for that kind of maneuver she pulled pulled up and rotated and that shouldn't shouldn't black out. Um would probably disorientate you just because of all the star movements and everything and um, trying to work out where you are but you wouldn't black out from it. Some aliens can handle g-forces better than we can and the Centauri are willing to put their fighters on autopilot and risk blacking out. I'm not wrong am I? They wouldn't be experiencing g-forces in space like that. An atmosphere yeah. People coming and going and secret meetings. You never know what it's all about until later. When it's too late. They never listen to us. It's true, they get to see everything that's going on and can't do anything about it. We need them in top fighting condition. I'll see to it personally. And if they don't get any better, I'll start issuing live ammo. <laughs> Inspirational effect? Yeah, that'll do it. The Centauri have invaded both our territories. They have taken one of our listening posts. They say they have liberated it. We hear they are preparing to attack other races, other worlds. That's what I was saying. I think last week or the week before, but um, they attacked the Narn, and everyone was a bit just like, "Yeah, it's happened to the Narn. Hasn't happened to us. What? Yeah, you know, why should we be worried?" That's why. Now they're starting to spread out more, attack more, attack other species. It doesn't stop. Something as big as that, a big war from a big species, you need to be paying attention to it. She's still in the credits. So is he. <laughs> what the hell do you think you are doing? Do not address me in that tone of voice. Oh, he has changed. Putting a buffer zone around the Centauri Republic will lessen tension and decrease the risk of conflict. So, they're creating a conflict to reduce the conflict. Makes sense. Everything is falling apart and the Centauri are at the center of it all. He... Londo is at the center of it all. Hey, he's not the Londo I used to know anymore. Mm. You're the closest thing he has to a friend here. Is there any way to get through to him? Not as long as he's afraid. 
V is probably the closest thing he's got to a friend, but uh, yeah, from what we've seen, Garibaldi is the closest non Centauri who could be his, his friend. Yeah. For Lando, it's like being stuck on a wild horse. You don't want to get thrown, so you hang on even harder. Yeah. He's trapped. He's all in. Half the time, I'm so furious with the guy I could break his neck. On the other half, I feel sorry for him. At least they can see that. That doesn't help, but they can see it. They could ignore the problem as long as it was just the Niren and Centauri. Yeah. Fight. But with the other races getting involved... Should be raising some warning flags. VIP come through the gate. It's Frederick Lance from the Ministry of Peace. What goes? Oh, a couple guys say they saw something in hyperspace. That's going to pique his interest. Said it looked like a cross between a spider and your worst nightmare. Mm, sounds familiar. Mr. Lance. Welcome. This is Mr. Wells, my co-director. He's in charge of the Nightwatch program. Mm. Ministry of Peace and the head of Nightwatch. Hey, Mitch. How's it going? He's pumped in for information. A ghost? I don't have to. It was jet black. And it shimmered when you looked at it. When it flies past, it's like you hear a scream in your mind. Hmm. He said when it flies past, you hear a scream in your mind. It's like you hear a scream in your mind. We have heard it make a screaming noise, which kind of implies, because obviously you can't hear sound in space, that it is giving out some kind of telepathic scream uh, as it goes past. Um, otherwise, how would he know... That it's just a weird thing to say that you hear a scream in your mind, whereas when we know it does make that kind of noise. I tried looking for it on my own, but the captain told me to lay off. Weird thing to call it a ghost. It's not anything like a ghost. It's more a devil. But you realize it's almost Christmas back home. Yeah, it's easy to forget out here. We mm. don't have seasons in Babylon 5, but I noticed. That's weird. Uh, obviously, they, they wouldn't have seasons um, on a space station, but you think they'd still... Well, they would still be doing a calendar. They still know the dates and everything, so... It's not a thing to say that they, they'd they noticed. I mean, you would. How many grandchildren do you have? Hmm? <laughs> Does it show? Hmm. Well, that's why I'm here, you know. Give them a legacy, a better world. Hmm. Interesting, he said a better world, not a, a better galaxy or a better universe. Um, he's in the Ministry of Peace, um, which from what we've seen, seems to be very Earth-focused and, and the Night Watch. Um, although, granted, it is a phrase, um, so he might be in it as simple as that, just a phrase that he wants to make the world better for his children, but, I don't know, part of me thinks there's a deeper meaning to it than that. He literally means Earth, and that's it. The war. Yes, there's been enough death. Time for something better. Not death. Picking up a jump point forming in Sector 39. That's on the other side of the planet where nobody but us can see it. Reading one Narn... Yeah, Narn Cruiser. This is War Leader Nakal. If you'll forgive my saying so, I didn't know any Narn heavy cruisers had survived the war. God, I thought all of them destroyed. But with the support of others, we may one day help liberate Homeworld. One cruiser. And Babylon 5 is our only hope. Oh. Uh. We have expended the last of our energy in getting here. Huh. No pressure. Uh -huh. Oh, just, well... Jakar asked for sanctuary, just him as an individual, and he was given it. And uh, Sheridan was able to give that. In It's in his remit to give that, he said. Um, but a whole non-cruiser, um, that's a bigger deal altogether. The last non-heavy cruiser. God, that's scary. Can you imagine just the last ship? All the other ships have been destroyed. Oof. You've worked your way up through the ranks without a patron, without connections, just through hard work. And now your commander on a high-profile base like this, you should be proud. He's buttering her up. 
The way you're going, I have every confidence that you'll get that starship within five years or so, but why not shave a year or two off that? <laughs> scratch our back. Oh, I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine. You have access to certain information, certain reports about the comings and goings of various ships, people, and cargo. She's not going to go for that. Okay, so maybe it takes me a few more years to get my own ship. But she'll get there on her own merit. I'll have done it honestly. Without selling out a friend or betraying a confidence. Thing is, yeah, she's honourable enough to, to do this and say what she just said and to mean it. There are a lot of people out there who's jumped at the offer and, uh, yeah, given out the information, got a ship uh, earlier. So I completely understand him asking. He could have done much research on her um, if he thought she was going to say yes. But, yeah, a different person in that position would have said, could have said yes. The offer will remain open indefinitely. Hmm. Fine. Open? <laughs> Time for you to go! <laughs> no one else knows of this. Not yet. The ship is holding position on the other side of Epsilon 3 where incoming ships won't see it. Mr. Lance? He's here from the Ministry of Peace. He's looking into the Centauri problem. And Earth is ready to take sides. Ah, that's the thing. Do you think I could speak to him? I don't see why not. No. Even though I don't recall seeing any recent reports from you, Mr. Allen, your associates have filed reports. One of them describes potentially disloyal acts on the part of a store owner in the Zocalo. Well, I thought we could exercise our own discretion, yeah. Obviously not. They want to know everything. Dock workers consistently late for work, sabotaging efficiency. Wow. Two more shop owners have openly criticized presidential decisions. I mean, the amount of detail they want to know information on, I mean, everybody would more than likely say something or say the wrong thing as far as they're concerned at some stage or do the wrong thing at some stage. I mean, it'd be a full-time job for all these people just to be writing it all down and sending the reports in. Ah. I guess I haven't been thinking in those terms. I'm not sure I'm really comfortable with it. No, nope, you just thought it was just a bit of extra money. You show great promise, Mr. Allen. Great promise indeed. He's probably got to keep him happy because he's... Um, Probably one of the mo most senior people there. He's second in command of security, if I remember rightly, uh, now. Um, so, yeah, he can't just sort of tell him to get lost. He needs to sort of bring him into the fold more. I brought it. Wasn't able to get my gun camera around in time to get Ooh, a picture, but. He's actually got a recording. Just configure your sensors to look for the signature emission. <sighs> uh, yes, yes, how can I help? This is Jakar. Formerly Ambassador Jakar of the Non Regime. Ooh, that face dropped. If I could speak to you for just five minutes. No, I'm afraid that's not possible at the moment. What if you took your jump engines offline? Well, if we shut down the engines, it would take some time to reactivate them. As long as you're in Babylon 5 space, we'll protect you. You have my word. Ooh, that's a big thing to say. We will take the engines offline now. He's committed now. If, if, if the Centauri pop up, he has to defend them. Have you been teaching your forces to fight the Centauri? Well, with everything that's been going on, it seems prudent. No, no, this must stop at once. I'm here to sign a non-aggression treaty with the Centauri. Hmm. We will. That goes against giving sanctuary to that ship. Well, we've known peace in our time till the Centauri attacked. I'm sorry I missed the meeting, but there's something you should know. Well, she's the officer who's on the bridge. Uh, command center. Oh, right. So she's about to tell them about the Narn ship. Um, oh, that's not good because she's a, a trusted um, command officer. Else she wouldn't be in the. Oh, I'm going to say the bridge because it's easier for me. Um, so that's not good if you're going to have people running off and telling other people what stuff is going on. That's hard to trust them. All this does is get us out of the way so the Centauri can move in on the other worlds. Yeah. Throw them under the bus. You know, it's going to be a new year in a little over a week. Maybe 2260 is the year that we redefine it. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Happy Hanukkah, whatever. Oh, yeah, if it's going to be new year in a week, then yeah, it'll be Christmas. Thank you. You haven't seen what it is yet. 
I don't really have one of these. It's shrapnel from the Black Star. Everyone said it was impossible to take out a Minbari war cruiser. But you did it. The way things are going, I figured it might be nice to have a reminder that the impossible hmm. is possible. Don't let Delenn see it. I demand to speak with you at once. I think you might know. Who turned it and its crew over to us at once? Open up a channel to the Narn ship. Got to get him out of here fast. Miss Jump Engine's down. Jump point okay. Only one Centauri ship. Launch Zeta Squad. Tell them to surround the Narn ship. Scrambling fighters. So they're hoping that the Centauri won't attack because they'll hit Earth or Babylon 5 ships. The treaty hasn't been announced or formalized yet. I promised them sanctuary. I mean, yeah, if the treaty has not been announced yet, there is nothing formal in place. So he's actually not doing anything wrong, really. Once its engines are repaired, it will leave Babylon 5 space. After that, it's no business of ours. If they open fire on any of our fighters, I will respond with deadly force. That's true. Once it's left Babylon 5 space, it's not their issue anymore. Ooh. Here's the new enhanced weapons. Fighters are in position. Can you move toward the jump gate? Yes, but not very quickly. Where's he going to go, though? Where's he? There's nowhere else for him to go to. I mean, yeah, in Babylon 5, in theory, space, he should be able to stay there, and it's kind of like a neutral territory. Um, but obviously, they can't stay there forever. But yeah, what's, where's he meant to go? Those are big engines. Targeting the Narn vessel, Zeta Squadron, and us. Ah. Was that like a submarine ping then? I continue escorting her out. <laughs> Close blast doors. Centauri weapon system locking on. Definitely preparing for the worst. We've got an energy spike. Oh hell. They started it. Oh. Never knew what those bits are for. Well the new weapons are meant to give them the ability to take on a ship like this. Plus they've got the fighters as well. It's too late. Not Babylon Fire's fault, but <laughs> repercussions now, they destroyed it. And the land didn't even fire, it was purely Babylon 5 and, and its ships that fired. You had no business helping a non-cruiser. Are you yes, telling me to disobey he... regulation? Earth Force personnel are required to answer distress calls. <laughs> not currently involved in hostilities against Earth. Which they're not. The Centauri government accuses you of moving Babylon 5 from neutrality to a pro non position. Well, from their position, from the Centauri's position, yes. I can see how they would think that. But as Sheridan just said, according to... Uh, Earth's own regulations, he did everything right. So actually, he's kind of, it's kind of brought Earth in to the fight, but uh, under their own rules, their own rules have brought them into it. Um, so it's actually quite clever, but we'll see. I've spoken with the Joint Chiefs and they support his actions. There's a but. However, <laughs> the decisions leading up to those actions are another matter entirely. Had we been informed as soon as the Narn cruiser appeared, there would have been time to inform the Centauri. There was no need to inform you. Nothing to do with you. They're willing to drop the whole matter in exchange for an apology. Oh! It's a direct order from the Joint Chiefs and the President. Apologize. Or resign. Disobey a direct order from your superiors. You would be removed from your position, and someone more hmm. reasonable would be installed. Put with their own puppet in place. You can phrase the apology any way you see fit. As with everything else, it's the thought that counts. Hmm. Neutrino emissions up 80%. This is Zeta Leader. Breaking off to investigate something. I apologize. <laughs> I'm sorry that your crew was stupid enough to fire on a station filled with a quarter million civilians, including your own people. And I'm sorry I waited as long as I did before I blew them all straight to hell. Sounds sincere, an apology to me. It's the thought that counts. 
<laughs> Might need to tweak some of the words a little bit. Computer, follow unidentified ship. Begin recording. Everyone's talking to each other. Londo's there on his own. And it looked like he realised that no one was talking to him as well. So, a couple of Centauri who aren't going to be happy at the explosion and he shouldn't be there because he's not an ambassador or anything anymore. I thought if I spoke on Sheridan's behalf, that may not be wise. No. It's good that he thought about doing it, but it'll probably make things worse. Attach homing beacon and eject system record. Oh. Ooh. So I'm assuming he's dead. Look, something happened to his face. Looked like he was oh, kind of melting. Oh, that's not good. Emergency override. Open shuttle doors. Emergency alert. We've got an explosion in the core shuttle. We need rescue jetpacks, and we need them now. Rescue jetpacks. But the ground is rotating at 60 miles an hour. If we can't catch him, he'll be killed by the impact. Okay. Uh, so th that train goes through the center of the station, which means there would be... Uh, they would be almost weightless, because uh, there'd be no gravity uh, in the center, or little gravity. Although, why weren't they floating off they didn't, uh, in the actual train? They seem to be walking around fine. They should have been almost weightless um, so he's jumped out and he's basically floating down but the closer he gets or sorry the further away he gets from the center the faster he's gonna go because the rotation of the station creates a gravity um, so he's gonna speed up he's, she said 60 miles an hour it's rotating at so yeah he's gonna hit the floor um and yeah splat so they got, they got rescued jetpacks to get out there and um and save someone if that sort of thing happens if you're going to do anything you must do it now suiting up we'll get there in two minutes we don't have two minutes no. we've got 30 seconds we can't do it so that's kosh <laughs> They've all seen something different. So it looks like an angel, or what we would classify as an angel. And we know that they've visited Earth in the past. So it looks like they've visited all planets in the past, and that's how everyone recognizes them. And he's now revealed himself. Which isn't good. Those. The jetpacks are pretty useless then, really. Uh, unless they're used for other things as well, but for a rescue team, they're pretty useless. It takes two minutes to get there, and it doesn't take that long for someone to fall. They'll never get there in time. you think they'd have someone, a team, literally with them on their backs, ready to go at a moment's notice um, at all times. Otherwise, they're pointless as a rescue team. Every race that was in the garden saw something different, yet the same. A beam of light. Hmm. For millions of years, the Volans have visited other worlds, guided them, and... Uh, Manipulated us. Yeah. Programmed us so that when we saw them, we would react the right way. The Shadows will know what Kosh has done. They will worry. Afraid that he would not reveal himself unless the Volans were prepared to stand against them. Too, too early. Lieutenant Keffer is missing. And you, Ambassador Molari, what did you see? No, at least he asked him, spoke to him. I saw nothing. So if he saw nothing, that implies that the Vorlons didn't visit Centauri Prime, or the Centauri. Um, so all the other races saw what well, basically the same image. It was a, a, an image of light, but the face, or maybe a few other features, would 
related to their race. Don't quite know how that would work. He said he saw nothing. I mean, does he literally mean nothing? So what, he looked up and just saw um, the captain sort of slow down and land and nothing else there. Don't quite know how that would work. I, I, literally seeing nothing. I think you might see some kind of form of some kind, but not know what it is. Um, but he seems to be the only one who didn't see anything. As anticipated a few days after the Earth's Centauri Treaty was announced, the Centauri widened their war to include many of the non-aligned worlds, as could imagine. <sighs> Shopkeeper. So why has he been taken? What, just for saying the wrong thing? Surprised Garvald, he doesn't know something to say about that. These images, released exclusively to ISN, strategic analysts in Earth Dome have indicated they don't know who this new race might be, but promise to find out. So yeah, his ship was destroyed. Surprised, I mean that implies that that was broadcast on ISN. I'm surprised that wasn't hushed up. Um, but I mean if that's going to be um, broadcast and that people would recognise it, that's going to prompt Story of the Shadows to move quicker because they're now out there completely for everyone to see. Um, wow, it was a good episode. Um, yeah, so the war is basically started now. And never got the apology. Um, I assume he did apologise at some stage. Um... Or maybe he didn't. Maybe that's why the things have, are kicking off more. Yeah, so that large ship, where has it gone? Yes, the Centauri turned up, and I understand why they would have demanded the ship, but yeah, then they attacked. They're a bit silly, really, to attack the station, the Star Furies, and the Narn ship. They shouldn't have attacked Babylon 5. They should have just attacked the Narn. Yeah, the Narn. If they should have attacked the Narn ship. Yes, the Star Furies might have got in the way, but if they they specifically targeted them. And because they fired on Babylon 5 first, Babylon 5 had to fire back. If they hadn't fired on the station and Babylon 5 fired first, it would have given the Centauri more of a leg to stand on, really. Uh, certainly more than they had from the actions that happened. So that was a bit odd, and especially say, three attacking three different targets um, who all, as a combined force, easily really out can outfight you. Um, yeah, that was a very odd tactical move. You think they just would have attacked the Narn ship? That was a bit odd. Um... So, um, Kosh revealed himself. Still trying to think that all through. Um, let's say, I'm assuming the look is of, of like angels, um, as as we think of them. Um, sort of the wings, the the the, the, gl the light, um, beings of good. Cause I think it's safe to say that we think of most angels as um, godlike um, or from God um, and good basically I, I know Lucifer is actually an angel uh, but um, well, yeah um, so it's they, they've been visiting all the planets for a long time and they basically ingrain themselves as when we see them, we know that they're good and um, uh, angelic, basically. So I don't quite know how everyone sees different things. That must be something to do with... They must have an ability that when different races look at them, they see different things. don't quite know how that would work. And say the cent 
well, not necessarily the Centauri, but Londo. I'm assuming the Centauri, but Londo didn't see anything. We don't have any other Centauris to confirm or deny anything at the moment of what they saw. Um, I say, which could only really mean that. Well, it could mean that the Centauri, uh, the uh, Vorlons never visited Centauri, or Kosh didn't want Londo to see what he looked like. That could be possible. If he can make every race see a different thing, why not make the Centauri not see anything? That seems in his powers to do. So, I think I'll have to see more future episodes about that, what happens. Looks like Kefler, Kefer, I can never know if his name, I think it's Kefer actually, is dead because the we saw the video, the beam came round and it looked like when we saw his face, it, he, something happened to it. So, yeah, so he's dead. Shame. Because he had such a big role in the show, didn't he? Um, I keep forgetting he was in it. <laughs> um, but it looks like he found out the truth. Surprised that the shadow ship didn't go after that beacon. I mean, it wasn't that far away. Uh, he could easily have a blowed it up um, and I say I'm surprised that ISN broadcasted the, um, the the images of them that seems a bit odd and not in keeping with what we've seen so far so yeah looking forward to the next season I think it's going to be um, a fair bit going on so that'll be good next week I've, I've didn't realise this was going to be the last episode until I started preparing to watch it. I just didn't realise we were that far along. So next week we'll have a um, uh, a recap, sort of a sum up of the season um, video, which uh, I had prepared for. So I got a lot of work this week to get that done. Um, so yeah, I'll have that next week and then the week after uh, into season three. So yeah. Let me know. I know this has been an anticipated episode. So let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. And I shall see you for the the sum up and then the next episode. Bye. <laughs>